Hey guys, so this is the Andy Cine 4K 5.5 inch IPS touchscreen on camera monitor. It comes with a internal power kit that is attached to the back of this monitor. Let's go ahead and unbox this and see what the capabilities are of this awesome little kit. In the box you get this very nice red and black carry case with all of the relevant equipment inside. You have the user manual with a warranty card and a cleaning cloth, the on-camera arm for the cold shoe mount, a sunshade clip, the sunshade itself and a HDMI to micro HDMI cable which is pretty small and is the perfect length to attach to your camera. So this is the monitor, it looks very compact and very high quality. So let's go ahead and see what the different ports are on this device. So on the bottom right, you can see that this has a USB-C charging input. So you can actually power this with a USB-C powered device, whether you want to plug that into a wall outlet or a plug or anything like that, you can use USB-C to do that. Even a power bank would do a good enough job. You have a headphone port there as well in case you wanted to monitor the audio. You have a quarter inch screw to mount this on a tripod. Then you have a standard DC out charging port there as well for the device. On the left hand side, you have two HDMI ports. One is HDMI in, the other one is HDMI out. One thing to note is that this supports 4K HDMI input and 4K HDMI loop out. Then you also have a 12 volt DC input port there as well. On the top, you pretty much have the standard function buttons that you get on any on-screen monitor. You have two function buttons that are customizable. You have the back and the forward buttons. You have the menu button. You have the up and down buttons to cycle through the menu and you have the power on button there. Now on the back, you can also have an external battery to power on the monitor and this supports the Sony NPF series batteries as well as the Canon LPE6 batteries. There's also an additional quarter inch screw there as well to mount this in a different position. You also have a external power kit to power devices that you want to connect to the monitor and to your camera, which I think is great. You don't get this on a whole lot of external monitors for your camera, but this is perfect for mounting things like wireless video transmitters or external microphone kits or anything like that. Something that can be controlled from your actual camera. You can also see there's some instructions on here. If you peel this out, there will be some screws underneath to take this out. So this is a dummy battery. Now you have the eight volt DC output to power your camera from this monitor, but you also have the 12 volt DC in to power this monitor if you don't use a battery. What I do is I will use the Sony MPF battery to power the monitor. And all I need to do is just connect the HDMI cable to my micro HDMI port on my Sony a7 III. One last bit of information about the USB-C port. Of course, you can use this to power the device, but this is also used to load 3D LUT files onto the monitor so that you can view and adjust them on screen. And you can have a maximum of up to 32 LUT files, which I think is a great touch, especially if you do a lot of professional color grading in your videos. So now let's go ahead and connect this to my tripod, mount this on my camera and run through the different menu items and see how the quality is off the screen. Okay guys, so just before I turn on the screen, just wanted to showcase you guys how I've set this up. So I have the HDMI cable going into the micro HDMI port there. That's the only cable that is connected. On the back of the monitor, this is a RAV Power Sony MPF compatible battery. I have a link in the description of where you can buy the dual battery pack to connect this as well. It's very compact. It lasts a very long time. You can see super slim. So now what I want to do is just quickly run through the specifications of the screen itself and the quality of it before I run through the different menu items. So the screen itself has 16.7 million colors and by native design, it is 1080p full HD, but it supports a display of up to 4K to a maximum of 30 frames per second. And it does go up to a maximum of 500 nits of brightness. So if you use this outdoors, I recommend using a sunshade if you are in bright sunlight. Now it does have 440 PPI density with a contrast ratio of a thousand to one. And it also has an adjustable backlight, which I'll showcase in a second as well on how to adjust. And the viewing angle of this is around 80 degrees from both the left, right, above and below positions. So that is absolutely great. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And I'll also turn on my camera as well. There you go, looks absolutely amazing. 
So let's go through and run through the menu. You can use the buttons along the top, which is very common in most on-camera monitors. However, this is touchscreen, so I'm going to try and use the touchscreen wherever possible. To bring up the menu, all you have to do is double tap anywhere on the screen and the menu comes up there on the left hand side. So just to quickly run through some of the items, I won't spend too long going through each one, otherwise we'll be here for quite a long time. The first one is the picture settings, exposure, focus, histograms. You can actually scroll if the menu requires it on the right hand side, if it is longer than what's visible. The second one is the grid and markers menu. So you can change the save frames, the grid sizes, the markers to give you the right positioning for when you're filming. The third menu, is about all of the different positions of the monitor itself. So you can change the aspect ratio, turn anamorphic on and off. You can also zoom, image flip, show the on-screen display and flip that, zoom, etc., etc. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is that if you flip this the other way, so I'm going to turn this around. If I wanted to flip it so I can see it from this angle by just flipping the view like that. you'll notice that it doesn't change and you'll have to manually change it yourself. So you can see the menu is upside down. So it doesn't have that auto rotate functionality. So I'll flip it back. So you can see image flip is one of the options. If I select that, all I need to do is cycle through and it will go through the four different variations of flip until you go back. You can turn zoom on and off. So you can zoom in four times, nine times, 16 times or off. There's also an image freeze as well if you want to capture whatever is on screen. The fourth menu item is the color grading one. This is where you can turn the LUT switches on and off. By default, they come with a set of four default LUTs. I've also imported a few more, as you can see, and I wanted to showcase to you guys how to import LUTs as well and view them on the screen so that you can color grade it in post editing for your applications. But all the other options here, you can change the color temperatures, the RGB standards, and the different picture modes as well, as well as the brightness and saturations, depending on the mode you're on. You also have the standard settings button there towards the bottom to change all of the monitor settings, the volumes, the signals, the display times, all that kind of stuff. The last one is the frame button. So on the top of the monitor, you'll see on the left hand side, you have F1 and F2. This is where you can adjust what those buttons do. And it's very easy to do that. So the F1 is to see my safe frames. F2 is the focus assist. Now this screen quality itself is amazing. What I really wanted to do, and this is one of the reasons why I've bought this, is to import LUT so that I know what the image will look like if I use a specific LUT in post editing, but I can see that in real time view. So to do that, you need to transfer your 3D LUT files, which are in .cube file extensions, and you have to use the USB-C port there to import them. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can buy a USB-C to SD card adapter and then have all of your LUTs transferred onto the SD card file. Or what I'm doing is I have a USB stick. I've put all of my .cube files in there. I've got some new ones and I have a USB-C to traditional USB-A adapter, which I'm just going to connect. Make sure it's in the root directory and make sure their file named are correctly and none of them are more than seven megabytes of file size. So you need to basically tilt the monitor a little bit so you have enough space to put the USB-C in there, like so. And now what you have to do is go into LUT import type C. At the moment, you can see there's six out of 32 that are currently being used. So I just need to press the right arrow. It will start importing. It will search the device that's connected in the USB-C port. If it's correct and they are correctly named, correctly file sized, it will start importing and you'll see that number. So it does a search. And as you can see, it's now importing the files that I have on the USB stick. So there's three, four, five, six, six more LUTs I've added. Now I can see them if I go into the LUT table. These are the ones that were just imported. One other thing to note, I already had imported a few LUTs from before, as you saw previously. If you re-import some new ones, it will override all of your custom imports. So you make sure that if you want to reuse certain LUTs every time, make sure they're always on the USB stick so that they will always be in the list. Otherwise, all your custom ones will be overwritten. So if I have five new ones I want to import next time, then these six will be replaced with the other five unless I keep these six on the USB stick. I'll turn the switch on first. 
So this one LUT that's turned on, if I go back to the LUT table, that's the first one, S-Log2. Now if I go to my first custom one, you can see it's a nice black and white look. And I just want to see if this works. Maybe I want to do a nostalgic film or anything like that. And then you can cycle through all of the other custom lights that you have. Like this one. That's a nice dark vignette kind of vibrant image. So if I just quickly run through some others just to show you an example. You can see it works very well. So any type of movie looks that you want to get for your LUTs, you can import and it works absolutely fine. And that is one of the key standout features of this monitor. However, once you have finished the import, if you remove the USB, you'll notice that the LUT table would still keep all of your imported files from last time. It's only when you add new ones, it would replace it and you'll get a new list. So that is amazing. Now there's a couple of swipe features that I really wanted to mention. On the right hand side, if you swipe up, you can adjust the volume. On the left hand side, you can adjust the backlight of the monitor. So if you're outdoors and you want it to be more brighter, then you, all you have to do is simply swipe. The other good thing I like about the touchscreen is that you can also pinch to zoom. So if you really wanted to focus a little bit more on the subject, then you can just zoom like your smartphone and it works absolutely fine. And it will zoom out maximum to the one X level. And finally guys, I just wanted to showcase the viewing angles. So you can go up to 80 degrees in all directions, left, right, up, down just to see that you can still see the monitor clearly. So if I go around 80 degrees here, you can still see the image. This is pretty much 90 degrees, you won't be able to see anything. But pretty much it's very clear from all viewing angles, you can see it's shot and the backlight is not even at the highest level. So I'm very happy with that. You can swivel this in pretty much any direction, even from the top view, it looks great. One of the main reasons why I bought this is because of the clarity and the quality of the screen itself, the ease of setup, the inbuilt power kit with the dummy battery already attached to the monitor and the fact that you can output this in 4K because I am recording a lot of my footage in 4K. So that's it guys, I'm super happy with this purchase. Take a look down below where you can purchase this on Amazon. It comes in roughly around 200 pounds. This is my go-to monitor for all of my filming now. I used to use other ones in the past, but this one does so much a better job than all of those previous ones. Don't get confused between the A6 Plus and the A6 Pro. They are slightly different, but I'll leave a link down below where you can purchase this. Andy Cine, great company. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. I do a lot of camera accessory videos, which I know you're gonna like, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.